Hi students, this is Mrs. Russell and I wanted to talk to you more about our experimental design diagram, also known as our EDD, as well as the scientific method. And I know a lot of people had vacations planned over Labor Day and so I wanted to detail this information so you guys could keep re-watching this video and hopefully understand a lot of the things that we have done in class this week. So whenever we're reading scientific method scenarios, they are basically stories of how people approached an experiment. And what we do is we take that information and we stick it into an experimental design diagram, which I've highlighted on the left part of this screen. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the third homework problem that I didn't make you guys do and use this as our story to fill in to our notes page. So in this story, there's a shopping mall that wanted to determine whether the more expensive Tough Stuff floor wax was better than the cheaper Steel Seal floor wax at protecting its floor tiles against scratches. To figure out which one was better, the mall experimenter took one liter of each brand of floor wax and applied it to each of the five test sections of the main hallway in the mall. The test sections were all the same size and were covered with the same kind of tiles. Five other test sections received no wax. Each week for three weeks, the number of scratches in each of the test sections was counted. And here are the results after the first, second, and third week. So when we take stories and we try to fill out our EDDs regarding the story, we first start with the research question. Just like in English and in writing conventions, a question is going to end with a question mark. So this is simply, what question was the experimenter trying to answer. So in this, it seemed as though the shopping mall wanted to determine which floor wax was better. So we could just say, which floor wax is better, question mark. Simple enough. In order to move on to the title, we use a certain format, the effect of the independent variable on the dependent variable. And notice that later in our EDD, it actually asks you, well, what's the independent and what is the dependent variable? So in talking about what those terms are, the independent variable is the exact substance or object that the experimenter actually changes each, each time. It's what the experimenter is controlling and what they are manipulating, what they are changing. So in this story, we have three different groups. We've got a group of floor tiles that get tough stuff, a group of floor tiles that get steel seal, and a group of tiles that receive no wax. So what the experimenter purposefully changes between each group is the type of wax. We would refer to the type of wax in this experiment as our independent variable. The dependent variable is how the experimenter intends to measure these results or what the experimenter is going to see by changing the wax or by changing the independent variable. So in the results, it shows in this bullet point, it says each for the three weeks, the number of scratches was counted. So by changing the type of wax, the experimenter expects to see a difference in the number of scratches. So that would be our dependent variable using this story. So now that we've stated what our independent and dependent variables are, we're able to actually title this experiment scientifically. We will use this kind of format. We always start with the effect of, and then we just plug in our independent variable the effect of types of waxes on, so what is the type of wax going to affect? Well, it's hopefully going to affect the number of scratches in this case, which is our dependent variable. There we go. So moving on, we always start with our hypothesis. A hypothesis is not just a guess, it is a supported by evidence, background, research infused prediction of what will work best. So in looking at this, we are comparing Tough Stuff to the other brand Steel Seal. And it's kind of hard to catch, but the shopping mall is thinking that 
the tough stuff is going to be better than the steel seal because it's more expensive. Um, and typically we think more expensive shows a higher quality. So what we're going to do is put it in our hypothesis format, which is if, then, because. So we'll just say if the Tough Stuff Floor Wax brand is used, then what do we expect to see happen? Well, the floor will have less scratches because, and this is where you have to support your hypothesis with evidence, and they haven't listed a lot of evidence, but they do insert the idea that it is more expensive, which means higher quality, because it is more expensive, meaning higher quality. That should be apostrophe. So moving on in our EDD, we've talked about our independent variable, which is the type of wax. That's what changes between each of the three groups. Whenever we get to the levels of the independent variable, it might be helpful to think of them as the details of each group. For instance, group one had tough stuff, T-O-U-G-H. Group two had steel seal. Lastly, group three was exposed to no wax. So out of these three, we have to consider, was there any groups that was actually control? What we mean by a control group is a group that doesn't get the independent variable. It purposefully does not receive the different type of wax because the experimenter wants to see what will naturally happen. And so in choosing out of these three, we find that there's a group called no wax, and that's used to compare because if no wax actually got the same amount of scratches as tough stuff, why buy the tough stuff if your floor is doing just fine? So a lot of the times in an experiment, an experimental will have a group that doesn't get changed. It just is what naturally occurs in order to compare their results to make better findings. So we've said that the no wax group was controlled. The experimental groups are the groups that do get the independent variable. So in this case, the groups that did get the type of wax. We notice that there are two groups that got different types of waxes, and that was group one and two being tough stuff and steel seal. We talked about the dependent variable. That's what we expect to see as the result of applying different types of waxes in this case. Um, but we haven't yet talked about the constants. Constants are things in an experiment which help keep it fair, meaning that one group doesn't have a better advantage than the other group. Um, so there are things that we want to keep fair to ensure that each group is getting a fair test. For instance, you may have noticed that they applied one liter of each brand to be fair, because if you applied more than one liter, you might get different results. Um, so one liter of wax. It was at the same mall. What else was the same? Um, each group had five test sections. Another similarity that they were all located in the main hallway. One wasn't in a really expensive store that people don't really shop at versus another group being in a high traffic area. Um, let's see. Ooh, each was recorded after three weeks, so we had the same amount of time. For a last similarity, um, each test section was the same size. So hopefully in looking at this video, you're able to see how we can take these scientific stories and actually insert them into our experimental design diagram and detail out what is actually occurring. Hopefully you guys understand. If not, come to tutorials and we will keep practicing, practicing this skill.